All right, Shalom. All praise, honey, and glory be to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, Waha Rakakwadash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, want to give double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and honors to you brothers out there that is also laboring in His work. So, yeah, this sitting right here is going to be pretty much continuing in the theme of walking circumspectly and being vigilant. And the Apostle Gaba, you know, he touched on this subject maybe going back a couple of days ago as well as the elder brother Kazak briefly went into this subject, basically highlighting the fact that, you know, when you're a servant of Yahweh Shah, you must apply wisdom. Why? Because these people out here, they looking to devour you. It's like we were thrown in the midst of wolves. Because what we bring out in the message that we teach is not in harmony with the people of this world. Thus the title of this lesson, Behind Enemy Lines. Now I was watching the brothers um, who channel goes by the name of Trumpet and Philly. And I'm not sure if these brothers is associated with Great Millstone. You know, I watch their videos from time to time. And hey, I perceive through the spirit that these are sincere brothers. You know, they go out on the highways and byways. They make their bodies a living sacrifice. I mean, that's more than you could say for most of these guys out here. You see? So I salute those brothers, but I was watching one of their videos and something jumped out. The one brother who had a chain around his neck. And I'm talking about a literal chain, you know, like DMX used to wear, like a dog chain. Well, you had a group of females to walk by, and pretty much the brother, he went in on them. You know, he cursed them out, basically, and said that they was dressed like whores and sluts. Well, you know, if you brothers come across this video, man, that's not how we do it. You know, if you give double honors to the apostles and you come in the same spirit as the apostles, then that's not how we do it. In fact, that's not how Yahweh Shah sent us out. Yahweh Shah ordered us to be harmless as doves and to come in the spirit of sheep. You see? And I must say, bro, you know, the one brother I'm speaking about, you know, you came across as a wolf. And that's not how Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah sent us out, man. So, if you come across this video, you know, it would behoove you to just consider and take heed and just kind of dial it back and tone it down. Because again, we're in the midst of wolves, man. All right. We pretty much the prey. And it's not for us to come across, you know, in that aggressive spirit. You see? Long gone are the days of standing out with a damn megaphone and cursing out and offending each and every person that walked by. The scripture is not in harmony with uh, taking that approach. You know what? Let me start off with that before we get into this lesson. Um, the book of Ecclesiasticus, the seventh chapter, in the seventh verse, it says, Offend not against the multitude of a city, and then thou shalt not cast thyself down among the people. Yeah, so... You know, like the brothers I just mentioned, just say if those women would have, you know, went and reported that back to their boyfriend or their brother, their cousin, or just some grimy nigga, and he would have came back, you know, and it could have, you know, uh, escalated into a brawl or fist to cuffs, then that would have been at the expense of the truth coming out. You know, you had to shut down the camp, you can't teach, and that's the main objective. And worse come to worse, niggas could have came back licking off shots, you see? So it's important to um, approach going out, especially going out on the highways and byways, man. You got to be in a certain spirit. You can't be in that rah-rah, you know, just that over-aggressive cursing everybody that walked by out, man. You know, just because a band of niggas walked by or, or a group of women walked by, you know, and they might be dressed like whores and sluts, that's not your cue to just curse them out. And furthermore, it's like this, man. I mean, what else do you expect? It's not this Babylon the Great. It's not the two-thirds out of order. So you shouldn't really marvel when you see, you know, um, 
our people out of order. That shouldn't take you out of your character. All right? And again, Yahweh Shah sent us out in a certain spirit. See, Yahweh Shah gave us the guidelines, man. The manual and the blueprint. You just can't go out the way you want to go out. The Lord gave us strict orders and directions, if you will, on how to go out. And that's spoken of right here in Matthew, the 10th chapter, in the 16th verse. It says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. See? And a sheep is not aggressive. In fact, a sheep needs his shepherd to protect him. That's why the scriptures say, Vengeance is mine. So if you come across or encounter certain situations, and hey, you know, I understand it's a work in progress because. It's been times, I'm going to be honest, man, when I first started going out, <clears throat> i never forget, I had a meltdown, man. <laughs> I just completely lost it on some guys, and, um, you know, I spazzed out, <clears throat> and um, pretty much from that point on, I started to examine myself more, and now, you know, I'm more um, rooted and grounded. No, I'm not as seasoned as the, as the apostles and certain brothers that's been doing this thing for years and years on end. <clears throat> but that one outburst I had, it pretty much showed me, you know, that, hey, that's not the way you are to do this, man. Because if something happened, the Lord will forsake you, man. Why? Because you didn't go out the way he told you to go out. And again, it says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. All right? Thus the title of this lesson, Behind Enemy Lines. Because if you a sheep in the midst of wolves, you in the midst of your enemies. A sheep and a wolf is adverse to one another. Matter of fact, <clears throat> let me get that also in the book of Ecclesiasticus, the 13th chapter. In the 17th verse, where fellowship have the wolf with the lamb, so the sinner with the godly. So yeah, by us being thrust into the midst of these damn um, wolves, <laughs> then we are uh, behind enemy lines. For an example, if you are a spy for the U.S., the U.S. of A., and you in Iran or some damn place, you're not going to have on a t-shirt with an American flag. You're going to be as discreet and low-key as possible. And that's the way we are to be in this truth, man. Again, the words that we got, all right, this scripture is a sword in itself. You don't have to overdo it or add any other energy to the scriptures. You could be laid back, all right? You could be soft-spoken, whatever. But this word is strong enough to do the damage. You don't have to do anything extra. All right? Again, these people, they are not in harmony with you, man. They really want to put you to death. Matter of fact, <clears throat> let me get that in 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, in the 8th verse. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour. Yeah, so you you got adversaries out here, man. Pretty much everybody outside of this truth is your adversary. And they got the spirit of the devil on them, all right? The spiritual being Satan, his spirit is on each and every one of these people out here, man. And they looking to devour you. You know, you can you know, just be going out or you might set up a camp in a different location. Then the people, they take notice, all right? But they might perceive, well, these just, you know, some million man march type of vibe. And they expect it to fizzle out. But once you continue to go out, they see that you're diligent. Here you go again, week after week. Then they begin to observe, you know, and they might ear hustle you. Then they're going to hear something that they don't like. Then they're going to become offended. And what's going to be the next step? They're going to look to devour you, man. They're going to start to plot and scheme, you know. Whether it's following you, getting your tag number, they might call the cops on you, which that happened to us um, maybe a, a couple of weeks ago. The spirit had it while I was speaking at camp, and I was speaking about these homos, and lo and behold, the spirit had it where a homo 
walked by, you know? And he was ear hustling and he maybe walked a couple of steps past the camp. And he stopped and he jumped on the phone. And I told the brothers, yeah, yeah, you no, know, this devil was about to call the cops because these homos, they know that they got rights, you see? And lo and behold, the guy called the cops and it's funny, the cop pulled up and he was walking to the cop car <clears throat> and the cop just smashed out on him, man. Just pulled off. <laughs> and, and the brothers is a witness to that, man. And that was Yahweh by Shemah Shah showing that he was with us. Why? Because we stayed in the spirit. It wasn't like the guy walked by and I took, you know, I took that for an opportunity to just get after him, you know? So you got to remain in the spirit. You got to go out harmless as sheep or, or should I say harmless as doves man because the Lord is sending us as sheep in the midst of wolves matter of fact um, let me get that in Ephesians the 5th chapter in the 15th verse it says see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise yeah and when you go into that word circumspect it's pretty much a compound word spec meaning to look or to see. That's why you hear the phrase speck in your eye, <clears throat> you know, or spectrum. What it means to look or see. And circle means around. So the word circumspect literally means to look around. And that's the spirit you got to be in. You can't be in just a um, gun hole, you know. You got to come out on the streets. When you come out on the streets, you got to understand that you are the prey, man. You know, and you can't come off as the aggressor. Matter of fact, let me get that. In the book of um, Isaiah, I believe it's the 59th chapter. Let me see. Yeah, Isaiah 59 and 15, it says, Yea, true faileth. And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. You see? So the moment that you begin to teach this word, that means you departing from evil. But what's the results of that? You maketh yourself a prey. And that's a sheep. Scripture don't say you make yourself a predator, man. You don't be out on the streets cursing everybody out. Now, yeah, the spirit get on you at times. You might you know, get are fired up, but that shouldn't be the gist of, of your um your teachings, man. You know, you got some brothers out there, they might have a bad day, you know, and they premeditate, look, man, anybody say the wrong thing to me, I'm going to lose it. You know, you, you can't bring that energy um into this ministry, you know? So again, it says, Yea, true faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey, all right? And that's where we are. We behind enemy lines, you see? And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment, see? So, the Lord is going to um, stand up for us, man. The Lord is going to intercede and going to bring the hammer down, if you will, on these people. He's going to bring the judgment, man. It's not for us to uh, take that approach. Why? Because it's like we fighting our enemies on their own home turf. Okay? We behind enemy lines. So when you behind enemy lines, you got to be very vigilant. You got to be circumspect. You got to watch how you move. You can't be, you know, just loose. You know? You got to pull it together, man. All right? So I just wanted to go into that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.